Tonight on our front, we delve into the unfolding stories of citizens attempting to get onto the voters' register in their quest to exercise their democratic rights. Passionate politicians strategizing to secure votes and election officials navigating the challenges of voter registration. We bring you an up-close look at the incidents that shaped day two of the limited voter registration exercise across the country, from double registrations to technical hiccups, long queues, and even the unexpected act of providing transportation to constituents upfront leaves no stone unturned in its exploration of all this important exercise. We shall be speaking to independent monitors, the Electoral Commission, in a former director of elections of the opposition, NDC. But we shall also be finding what's been happening with the attempt to injunct the process, as we are told that there's been struggles to get to the AC to get this going on. But first, let's go to the headquarters of the Electoral Commission and speak to the director who is in charge of electoral services there, Dr. Kwaku Serbo. You join us now on Upfront. You're welcome, sir. Uh, forgive me, yes, I, I surely should be able to get that right. And we have been told our reporters have been on the grounds. If you give me the opportunity, I will go through region by region, center by center, the many hiccups, double registrations, long queues, and even the acts that some are beginning to have difficulties with. Did we commence this registration on a false start, or is just the normal things we expect in a registration like this? Uh, are you saying attempted double registration or double registration? Oh, well, of course, attempted though, because uh -huh. it ought to be established so as such. But clearly, I want to start from where people arrange issues to do with technical problems, like okay. machines so, or the uh, electoral uh, commission. Uh, uh, I just wanted to correct that. No, I get your point. So, so mm. one, there's no double registration. The, the system is able to detect those who attempt to do double registration. Mm -hmm. So it is a system that, that found them out. Okay, so that, and that, they were that, rejected that, ab initio. That tells you the integrity of the system. Okay. Then, again, with respect to the hiccups that you are talking about, I don't know if, if you, you check the, the hiccups yesterday as compared to today, you read that drastically the problems have been addressed. Or the problems have gone down drastically. Mm. And it is normal, uh, all those people that I've talked to, uh, what I told them that we are doing this exercise for 21 days. And basically, the first three days, you, you have the challenges, then you'll be addressing them. And by the time you will finish with the third day, the, the, the system will have been smoothing. So all that is, uh, is happening, it's normal, the challenges will start, and you'll be able to address them. One issue that we should also understand is that for three years, our officials have not been using the machine. So it affects their speed and they make small, small mistakes that they have corrected. So if you compare today's activities with that of yesterday, then you can see that drastically, you can see uh, most of them Problems of yesterday have been addressed. So that was my initial comment. Mindful of my experience with this system, they are supposed to print end of their reports. Do they have to also print commencement of their reports? Because I've heard some raised concerns about this. Uh, if, if, you, if you are going to start the work, you should be able to print the start of day so that you know where you ended the, the day before, whether it is confirmed with what, uh, what actually you concluded with. So you should be able to print start of day and end of day. Mm. Now that's interesting to observe, but is it what's happening on the ground? Already I've, I heard I've some... I've not had any contrary view. Okay, because I've heard, including the very leadership of the NDC monitoring this, express concerns about the inability of some centers to do uh, the commencement of their or end of the big start of their report. That's the actual terminology, I. Uh, if, you know, if it, it was at the place where there were challenges, while the system was offline, I'm talking of when you are doing the online and the problem is off, the network is down, you cannot print. Okay. So whatever the network was down at the beginning, you can't print. But before you start, once the, the machine comes online, you should be able to print. 
Now, the other point, though, is the arrest that happened in the Upper West region in the Wa municipalities. We understand that two individuals were apprehended at the Wa municipal office of the Electoral Commission. Uh, this is because there's this presumption that they were attempting to register twice. Uh, that, that is not the only place. There have been a lot of places where people... The, let me explain. If the system is online, it means that at any point in time, the system is linked to the 70 million people who have registered uh, in 2020. So if you are one of the 17 million and you put your fingers on the machine, because it is linked to the system online, it will do the matching and it will, put, it will tell you that you are uh, registered and your particulars will show. Okay. So that you, you, you will not even argue because your name the, uh, and the picture, including the, your clothing of the day that you registered, will show. So you can't, you can't argue. And the system will not allow you to register. So mm. that's how it, uh, what happened in uh, Huawei, so in Napa West, but it has, that is in the only place that we have had that issue. Okay, so how many so far across the country, and have they all been arrested? Oh, I, I, I don't have the case yet. Okay, now... We no, we no, normally we don't arrest them, we just ask them to go in peace. All right. So we will not allow you, we allow you to go, we, we don't arrest them. So, th but they were arrested in Wa. No, they, they, were, they, were they were allowed to go there. We will, oh. uh, we will reprimand you and I'll ask you to go. Okay, so they're eventually allowed to go. Now, yes, in they, the they in San Diego, in the northern region, the people were disappointed because the process delayed. In fact, this issue to do a network of 40 machines were pretty much what was actually uh, the excuse given. Uh, today, it started at 3 p.m. Yes, well then, uh, um, in, in Tamale... I know that we have even to elect some of the kids to them today. So when, when the backups and the rest are all not working, we, we, we were that in Tamale we needed to elect some of the machines to them, so we did that. We so, gave them four of the machines, but for some reasons they were not working. But some of them too, it's not that the machines are not working. For instance, today in um, one of the, the Swamp on one in the Shanti region, Yesterday, they rated only about seven or so. Today, the whole day, they were complaining. But when the IT consultant talked to them, they that the person who is working on it, who, did, who does not appreciate how the system works. So he went through with, us, with him about how to log in the rest. And within two hours, they had rated 58. So some of them, the people would tell you that the machine is not working. But because they might have forgotten their scores and... They didn't uh, maybe probably take the training seriously. And when they say they are ratified, then the system begins to work. So it's not all of them that you can blame the machine. Some of them too could be uh, attributed to our, the people who are facing them. Now, the, the, the concerns about transportation was the biggest problem in Peru East, in the Blue East region. Some were saying that they spent uh, 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 somewhere around 100 city traveling to the district offices. I know that there has been several pleas for you to at least isolate places where the centers are very far from the, most of the rest, especially in rural areas. After the first day hiccups, are you likely to consider the plea of the people? We, we, we did not decide on the visit out of the blue moon. We look at the implications on the system. And what our advice and I appeal to Ghanaians is that it, it, we spent a lot of money to compare new voters register. Let us maintain the integrity of the current system. And we can only maintain it by putting in any step that will help main, uh, pr uh, prevent people from abusing it. Now that we are, we are even doing it at the, at the district, look at the attempts to the, uh, uh, take advantage of the system. So we did not come out to decide to do it at a visit without considering the implications. Uh -huh. we, we have gazetted the 268 office, uh, retaining centers. If you want to add anything, you have to gazette and you need 21, years notice, 21 day notice. So for now, I will repeat that we understand whatever they are saying, but looking at the time and the 
effort to en en ensure the integrity of the system, let's go by what we have and we will we'll be able to do it and uh, prepare the data for the this level election. Next year, God willing, we'll have enough time to maybe expand it. Are you by any chance in the headquarters of the Electoral Commission? Come again. I was asking whether you have any idea um, what's been happening at the headquarters of the Electoral Commission if you are there. I work at the head of it, so I wouldn't. I Hold can't, on. I can't say that I know everything, but I work at the head of it. Okay, I, I, I get you 100%. It's because the lawyer, Ni Pakpo Samuado, has been really concerned about the inability of bailiffs to serve the Electoral Commission, some court proceedings, contempt application of a sort, because they've not allowed them to enter the building. Is this allegation true? I'm, I'm not aware that anybody has been stopped from coming to the office. But have you instructed policemen, uh, providing securities at the head office, to obstruct the bailiffs uh, from entering the premises? I've not heard of any bailiff entering the office who has been prevented. So I don't think anybody will give uh, 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 advice or instruction that nobody should come to the office. I entered the office without any hindrance, and I left without any hindrance. And it has not come to my attention that anybody has been prevented from coming to the office. Maybe finally, as we speak, has the EC received any rates at all? or applications of injunction, of contempt, or any suits at all? Have you been served? Some, those, those things will go to the legal department if they come. Okay. And uh, I wouldn't know. Doc, I'm grateful to you this evening. We'll be monitoring tomorrow, perhaps come to you on the latest development on it. But many thanks to you for your time this evening. Uh, Dr. Atub. Yes, Dr. Sibo Kweku is actually the Director of Electoral Services at the Electoral Commission. But I was raising this matter with you, and the lawyer who has been part of this particular engagement has been joining us now. Nick Papo Samuado, you are welcome to our front. I hope you are doing well this evening. I think that it is quite shameful that the EC, and I'll send you videos of what happened, and audios of what happened at the Electoral Commission today. I will send you videos and audios of what happened at the Electoral Commission this afternoon. Now, this is what happened. Yesterday, the bailiff of the High Court Temer went to the head office of the Electoral Commission seeking to serve the Electoral Commissioners with their contempt proceedings, applications that were filed. When he got there, he was informed by the security at the gate that they have a meeting ongoing and that he should come back at 9 a.m. today, at 9 a.m. today, the bailiff of the court was at the Electoral Commission headquarters. And he was asked or told that the head, there was nobody at the head office and that the head office is closed down for one week at the new head office. So he should proceed to the, what do you call it, the new, the old head office at the rate. Mm. So they left for the head office at Red. There was a lawyer from my office, there was the bailiff of the court. When they got there, that is when they had the confrontation. And I'm going to send you the audio for you to listen to and play back to Daniel. Join your new team. The conduct of the Electoral Commission is shameful. What they are doing is interfering with the service of the court process. We are left with no choice but to go back to the High Court and ask the High Court for some secure service of the process. If Mr. Slaybo is saying that they are not presenting any daily from the court to enter the premises, I am saying that tomorrow morning I'm going to ask the daily and lawyers from our office with comments from your television station to go to the head office of the Electoral Commission tomorrow at 9 a.m. and see whether they will be allowed entry into the premises of the Electoral Commission to effect the service. Let me get this straight. For those who are not in the known of the kind of uh, service you are seeking to serve the EC, exactly what is this application about? It is a content application to ask the court to hold the Electoral Commission boss, Jane Mesa, and two of the deputy commissioners for content. Why? And knowing the effect of that, that is why they are evading service. If Dr. Slibor is saying that 
he has given or the commission has given no satisfaction. I am saying this on Joy FM and I'm asking your television station to be at the head office tomorrow. We will come to your office and together with the bailiff of the court, we will go to the electoral commission office with you, the media, to seek to serve the electoral commission with the contempt proceedings and see what will happen at the gate. Now, let me understand this perfectly. I hope, Raymond, you are agreeing to this. That I... tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, mm. Joy FM, as part of your public service duty, is, is promising that you will provide us with media coverage to go with the bailiff of the court to the head office where Dr. Philip Wong insisted this evening and telling the whole world that they are giving no instruction for, for bailiffs of the court not to have service to a public institution to serve court processes. I want this on record. That tomorrow morning, Joy FM is guaranteeing that at 9 o'clock, as part of your morning show, you will give us live coverage at the EC head office to see the process of contempt being attempted to be served on the Electoral Commission. And let's see what will happen. I, I don't think that should be a very difficult thing. I mean... No, I'm not asking you to give me a vague promise. I'm asking you, with the hearing of all your listeners, to give us that promise that you provide us with coverage tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Certainly, we shall be there. But Thank my you. question is, did the EC officials, did, did the bailiff introduce him or herself? I am going to send you the voice. Let me send your, your team the voice recording so that I don't want to be the one speaking. You will hear the arguments they had with the bailiff and the lawyers from our office. And the understanding then was that they could not be allowed in because they were, they, they, they were instructed. In fact, they were asked to move away. And that's why I want you to hear the voice of the city personnel at the EC office. Mm. The EC office is a public institution. And Madame Genmesa is not above the law. She cannot interfere with the service of court processes. Ideally, the bailiffs are the officer of the court, right? Correct. And the bailiff was at the head of the He was there twice. You did mention that you go back to the courts uh, to inform the court what's happened. Because Dr. Srebo is telling you in front of all Ghanaians on your network that he has given no satisfaction. And you yourself have promised that tomorrow morning you provide us with the coverage. Tomorrow morning we will come to your office with the bailiff so that we move from your office to the electoral commission office together and see what will happen at the gate. Is this the normal process uh, when it comes to service and also people uh, possibly receiving it? Does it require... What is... What some... is... What, it's a very simple process. Yeah. When a court bailiff comes to your premises to serve you in a document, you have no right to tell him that he should go away. You have absolutely no right. Are they serving the institution or individuals they within are the institution? Both the institution and the commissioners who are involved. Now, let me get this straight because it's the clarity that is confusing people. So, security men will not allow them inside the building to go and serve them. Could they, could they? And they said they are under instruction. Could the security men be on a frolic of their own? Misrepresenting the institution by saying we that. We have them on voice, and that's what I'm saying that you know what? There's no need for, apart from the fact that we have them recording. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow is God willing, is just a few hours away. We are bringing the bailiff of the court to your office, Joy mm. FM, at 8 a.m., and then together with your correspondents, they will proceed to the offices of uh, the electoral commission. You will be there, you will hear everything for yourself. So, to get a, bit, a better understanding of what this is all about, first, you said there's an, a contempt application you are seeking to serve the EC. Yes. Exactly what was the basis for this contempt application in the very, first place? Very simple. We have filed and served on the Electoral Commission two processes. One is the originating motion on human rights by our client, who is saying that upon the fact that the distance between a house and the district office is too far. She is unable to make the distance, and therefore they are interfering with their right to be registered as a voter. When we realized that they had sent out the press release, 
indicating the fact that they will continue with the, uh, what do you call it, the court, uh, with the registration process. We filed an injunction application seeking to injunct the uh, EC from continuing or going ahead with the registration, limited registration exercise. They were served with that document as well. Once you are served with that document, and they set a precedent, Dr. Dufour joined the presidential primaries of the NDC. The Electoral Commission said because Dr. Dufour had filed a writ and an injunction application, they were not going to go ahead with supervising the presidential primaries of the NDC because they would be in contempt of court. So they are aware. And what I've said, when we served them, they still went ahead and started the limited registration exercise. Based upon that, we have found contempt application against them. They know the impact and the legal effects of being served with the contempt application. So they are seeking to swear their contempt application service. And they have instructed the uh, security men at their premises to interfere with the service of the, of the prophet. Is it unlawful to swerve the service of it this application? It is unlawful to interfere with the lawful service of court documents by court bailiff. Okay, but the question I was asking was uh, it was unlawful to swerve the it service. It is unlawful to interfere. And what they are doing is interference. When the, the, the bailiff wants access to the public premises to serve the documents on the officers of the electoral commission, the security men have been instructed not to allow him into the premises. Mm. Now, I mean, of course, I think we have to follow up on this tomorrow and get you to the... You promised to provide press coverage tomorrow, so it is not a problem. F certainly, and uh, we sure will be there to see what pans out tomorrow, whether this service can be carried out. But for now, I'm grateful to you for your time this evening, I'm sir. I'm also uh, And Nick Papo Samuado represents the plaintiff who is seeking, among other things, to drag the Electoral Commission to court for contempt. That service is what's the controversy surrounding this matter. Now, let's expand the conversation beyond the only happenings in town today. One more thing, though. Let's go to the Iowa Sioux West Wagon and speak to the NDC's parliamentary candidate, who's been very active in the quest to get people registered. John Dumelo, you're welcome to our front. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Now, I understand that you have not only been encouraging people, but you've been very active in the exercise. What's your general assessment of today's registration exercise? Well, good evening to your listeners and uh, viewers. Um, uh, today has been better than yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we were only able to register just about, I mean, the EC was, was, it, was able to register just about um, 57. Today, we went a little over 100. But all in all, still the process is slow, even though we are, uh, only two polling stations have been assigned us, you know, uh, and so the process is so slow. Um, people come in, people start queuing as early as 2 3 a.m., and as at uh, 12 1 a.m., I mean 12 1 p.m. in the afternoon, they still haven't registered. And so it's, 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 it's taking a toll on us, it's taking a toll on them as well, and uh, you know, it's, it's getting quite frustrating. Your constituency houses the University of Ghana and other schools actually. But yeah. the registration is happening a bit uh, somewhere around rage, right? Not within yeah. the constituency. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, that makes it also very depressing. I mean, because you have Legon students who, some are still on campus. You have other, um, um, what do you call it, university institutions that are around. You have Atraco, you have Radford, you have Nafford, you have, you know, other smaller ones around. And for them to travel all the way, to rig uh, in the morning traffic and stay there the whole day. Some even yesterday, some couldn't even get registered. They had to go back home, and this morning they came back. And so it, it, it's becoming frustrating. And what we are saying is, look, at least provide two or three other registration centers in the constituency so that people don't have to transport themselves all the way, you know, to 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 reach to come and register. And and, and that is all that we are saying. I just heard, I just spoke to the director of electoral services who was explaining that those places they are using for registration, they gazette these places. It takes 21 days to do additional gazetting of the places we are talking about. That's the entirety of the registration period. That's 21 days. So even though they've heard the complaints and everything, it's almost impossible to do it now. Maybe perhaps next year or in the future, they are likely to extend it. Does it sit well with you? 
And you couldn't gazette it before the whole process? I mean, the new district assembly elections were coming up uh, in December. You couldn't do that before? I mean, the, 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 his explanations are unacceptable, and that is no, we can't accept it. All we are saying is just decentralize it. Or even, as, even if you can't decentralize it, provide more registration tables at the EC, uh, at, at, at Ridge, where we are. We've only been assigned two. And trust me, sometimes it takes 10, 15 minutes to register one person. And I mean, look, it's frustrating. We have to provide breakfast, lunch, sometimes even supper for them. I mean, I'm talking about over 150 people each day, and it, it's taking a toll on us. I mean, no, I sorry. Know, you say whose responsibility is to feed the people who are seeking to register? It, it, is, it, is, it is my responsibility. It's our responsibility. You, the candidate in the election, but you are not a party to the registration. No, but the truth is, you are convincing people to come and register. So okay. We, we, we went to people's homes a couple of weeks ago and said, look, there's limited registration coming up. Would you please, we, ask, we need your vote, of course, in the district assembly elections, and we need your vote in the uh, elections next year. And so, it, it, to, to some extent, it is your responsibility to tell them or to bring them to the registration centers and, you know, make them feel comfortable until the whole process is over. You, you, they can't just come there. I mean, uh, I, I was listening to your, your Joy FM, and they were saying that people can't even afford 100 TV, you know, to transport themselves to the registration centers to get registered. And so this, is all, this, this whole process is just cumbersome. Now, you did mention that it's taking like 15 minutes to get the registration process of an individual going through. Is it normal, or this is unusually a bit too long? It's unusual. I mean, it's unusual. But of course, you know, when, when you know, the applicant sits in front of the EC official, of course, the EC official is asking certain basic questions which the applicant has to answer. But all in all, <laughs> if you see the, the queue outside, if you see the number of people who want to register, if you see people who have queued since 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and, 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 you know, they go and sit in front of the, the EC official and the EC official is asking questions. I mean, of course, at that point in time, the person is all worn out and frustrated. And so all we are asking for is fine. If you don't want to decentralize, you just get more tables, registration centers for us at the EC place so that people can do it, you know, quickly and they can go. I mean, some students are willing to come and register, but they have lectures. Mm. They have lectures. And, and, you know, they just, they just have probably a two or three hour window uh, to, to, you know, for themselves. And so they can't afford to come and sit at the EC place the whole day. And some people to argue, okay, what about Saturdays? Saturdays are there. But Saturdays, you would have more people coming because those who are free, of course, on Saturdays are not coming to register. And so it, it will still create a problem. Now, there was talk about voter suppression because people who are unable to pay to travel, people who are unwilling to travel, may not necessarily do so. How do you guys play a role in getting people to go to the centers to register? So we have to, look, um, I, I wake up every morning and, you know, my, my personal car, I try and convey the people to the registration center. It, it's tough. Even if I can't, I need to make arrangements for a bus to go and convey the people to the registration center, provide them breakfast, lunch, dinner. When they finish, I have to transport them back to their home because these are 18, 19, 20-year-olds. You, you pleaded with their parents to, to, to sort of give them to you for a day. And so once you pick them up, you have to take them back. And so it, it's cumbersome. And mind you, really, really, I mean, really speaking, they are just going to use the voter's ID card to vote. Apart from voting, it really has no other um, significance, you know. So you really have to convince them that, look, we need your vote, come and register. And so you have to make sure that they are, they are, they are comfortable throughout the whole process. I am grateful to you this evening for your time. I'm John Dumelo. He is the parliamentary candidate of the National Democratic Congress in the Ayawasu West Wagon constituency on day two of the registration exercise. And I, I'm joined also in this conversation by some others who have actually been actively involved in registration and election matters in this country. First, let me speak to the formal director of elections of the NDC. Elvis Efrianka, you're welcome to our front. Thank you very much and uh, good evening to you. I'm hoping to tap into your rich experience in elections organizing and also how these 
registration exercise goes, though that's the more reason I've been keeping you perhaps on hold throughout this uh, conversation. So you hear from the Electoral Commission, you hear from the matters panning out in court, and you also hear from the people on the ground when it comes to the registration exercise in reality. Are these familiar times? Have things changed or is just a repetition of what happens all the time? Well, I would say that um, ordinarily, when um, we're having a registration exercise, um, it shouldn't take us through all these difficulties and challenges. Uh, but unfortunately, since uh, Madame Jemesa and her team took over the reins of our electoral architecture, these are the kinds of difficulties that we've been having. And it's been consistent. You will recall that before the 2019 registration exercise, um, they actually came out to say that they were going to do registration in their district offices. And our legal team, um, led by Dr. Dominic Ayene and Lawyer uh, Enuchi, proceeded to court. Uh, it was in the process, I think just before the hearing, that the EC went to the court uh, with a notice that they were going to extend the registration to the electoral areas. And therefore, the case became mute because if we were going to court on a particular issue mm. and the institution that was involved has now come to say they are going to extend um, uh, the, the, the registration, uh, in other words, preempting whatever reliefs that we were seeking from court. And so I would have thought that after three years of no registration, where naturally there'll be a huge backlog of people, um, some estimates almost 3 million people in the limited registration exercise there, where they used about 1,500 uh, stations or electoral areas. Registered okay. almost 1.5 million yes. people. And then you have a backlog of almost 3 million. So it's just a reasonable expectation that you will increase the number of electoral areas. This shouldn't be a matter for argument or confusion. You know, we are all rational beings. So you expect that there are some things that do not call for argument or even going to court. It's very, very rational. I'm sure um, various contributors, and last week, my brother Sami Jemfi did a good job of going through the constitutional provisions. The CI, it's very clear that in determining a location as a registration center, you must look at suitability and accessibility. That is the CI-91. Okay. Two, one. Okay, so suitability and accessibility. Now, Speaking to John, and you are talking about Accra. I have so West Wagon is in Accra. Uh. Okay, is it suitable and accessible? Not to talk about Bali, Bamboy, Sifi areas, a farm place where people have to travel for hours on end. People have to travel long distances. Some have to spend 60, 100, 100 cities, and if they have to bring guarantee. So the issues are so clear that any reasonable person will say, look, let's have a compromise. But there are demands. And then in a democracy, if there are issues, the result we have is that the judiciary, you go to court. Then DC goes to court. And we're told that Chief Justice has traveled. Chief Justice has traveled, so we couldn't get a date. Can you imagine? Thieves come to your house, or you have a police case, you go to the police station, they said the station officer is not there, the IGP is not there. Or you are sick, you go to the hospital, Kolibu, they say the, the doctor is not there, so you should die. It's so ridiculous. It's so absurd. And for me, I see these are the things that endanger and threaten our democracy. Because in a democracy, you can only resort to the judicial system. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where if you have an issue and you go to the judiciary and you cannot get justice, we are told that they later called 
and fix a date, 17th of October, by which time the exercise will be over. Is that not an insult? Because you're going to court to seek justice on a matter, okay, that is time bound. And then you're given a date that will come after the exercise, complete contempt. Mm. And then lawyer Papua is telling us they filed a suit, they were served, and the electoral commission said they were going ahead. That is contempt. And then they were going to serve them again, and they issued instructions that they should not take the 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 the, the summons. Is this the democracy we want? Is this what we bargain for? Let me do all these foolish things, and then tomorrow, when something happens, you sit on radio and do a video and call for help from your friends. People should shout. People should shout. See the kind of foolishness some of our people engage in and destroy our democracy. Every right-thinking person must be concerned about this situation. Let this me bring in. Simple. Let me bring in Kodio first to join in this analysis that we have actually zoomed in here. PMK Abrampa has been a long-time watcher of our elections with Kodio and even before that. He understands how the system runs, right from registration through to the election itself. And, of course, you have Kodio as a very respected election observ observation unit. Mr. Brampa, you are welcome to our front. Thank you very much, my brother. And let me say a very good evening to my brother, Elvis. It's a long time. Mm. Uh, happy good to, to see you. Happy. See you again, my brother. Yes, yes, yes. Great now, series. I was just having the conversation about the recent happenings in our election or registration exercise, right from technical hiccups through to the inability of errors and delays, the distancing or the situation of registration centers and the difficulties that people are facing in getting themselves registered. The time required and the speed with which registration works, plus all of the technical issues on day two, dominating, but has not been, even though EC says has reduced drastically. We just spoke to John DeMello, who says, where he went through the process, that is not really the case. When you, who have been part of this system, hears these consistently repeated problems, with registration, what comes to mind? We never learn. Yes, Mr. Brampa. Well, okay, I, I suspect that there's a difficulty with a Zoom connection to PNK Abrampa. Let me now hope that we can fix that. Oh, so I'm told we are, we are lucky to have you on. Mr. Brampa, so I've asked for some views on what is the current happening as we have enumerated throughout this conversation in the registration exercise. Is it a cause for worry? Hello? Yes, I can hear you, Mr. Brampa. Can you hear me? I'm afraid I still have the difficulty, so maybe if it's... Yes. Yes, now I can hear you properly. So I was just asking about the things you have said about the current registration exercise, technical issues, delays, distancing, and all the other current legal problems are also coming up in the course of the engagement. Are these cause for worry, or is much ado about nothing? Well, good evening once again, my brother. And then... Let's let's group the issues into two. Mm -hmm. One are the obvious challenges that we all spoke about ahead of the elections, and of mm -hmm. course, um, th there were so many issues that we discussed. And uh, I think uh, this is the second uh, interactions I'm having with Joy, Joy, Joy FM. Um, when you say you tell Ghanaians that we're going to do registration, uh, what comes to mind is that a person will take all his documentation. Well, I guess the internet is not a very good friend tonight, right, from where PNK Abrampa happens to be. So because of the timing, let me bring in um, Elvis once again on this one. You are telling us why this is problematic and why it should not happen in the first place. But can we have a system that is foolproof, never with any technical difficulties? 
It's been explained, as was said by the director of uh, electoral services at the AC, that yes, these machines have not been used in the last two years. So there's a little bit of a problem. But he believes that they, we, are, we are getting past the problematic uh, goalpost and we are really having improvements in the second day. On whether or not the electoral areas, the specific registration sectors could be changed, he says it takes two, 21 days to do a gazette of these centers. As we start now, it might not be possible anytime soon. And they have heard the complaints, but next year may be the best option. So, uh, as somebody said earlier, if in 2019 you projected that you were going to register 700,000 people and you ended up registering 1.3 million people and then you used 1,500 electoral areas as your centers and in 2023 you, you project that you're going to register 1.5 million people, is it not reasonable that you expect that you will use almost the same number of electoral areas and registration centers. So why then do you insist that you use 268? If you divide 268 by your projection of 1.5 million, which we think is a low projection, what do you get? So what the effect is what we are seeing. So first of all, they didn't think this through properly. And I have good reason. Now I'm shifting from doing pure analysis to politics. That is as deliberate and intentional, and it's meant to favor our political rivals. And the reason why I'm saying that is that they are a government in power, so they will have more access to resources. They will have access to metro buses and all the other logistics. They can move their people to be able to register. And don't forget that we have a history where whenever there's registration, and in 2019, we set up various tax forces where people were actually caught registering people in the rooms of some party executives, okay, outside the registration hours. People Sorry, exactly where does this happen specifically? Oh, um, so many places and no I because be because you made a specific allegation i am obligated um, to ask for specifics so that i'll determine for myself if it is worth pursuing um you are a media house yes. and the last registration yeah you know that we arrested several people several people i'll be very surprised if you don't know we arrested several people in several constituencies who are doing illegal registration we arrested them and i have the videos i'll send them to you mm. okay now okay so this is a fact that was, that is I, known to forgive the me but i i was seeking to bring in mr brown into the conversation so that we can actually have other okay. thoughts on this one so i understand that now we have clarity on the line and we can Maybe. speak to you pnk abrampa yes the question i was asking is these issues that have been enumerated the difficulties we've had with the registration on second day is it something that is expected or it's quite unusual and a cause for worry. Well, uh, the, the, so, uh, sorry, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't join via Zoom because yeah. I'm in Tamale and the oh, part okay. of uh, the, the, mm. the, the region I am, the network is very bad here. Very so, well, sorry. we are grateful. Yes, but I, I'm happy uh, we can connect uh, on other, other lines. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, uh, let me say that uh, I made this statement and uh, some people did not get me right. When the issue is about starting its activities, uh, first of all, we need a stakeholders, especially political parties and their poll watchers, uh, to make sure that uh, we uh, uh, build consensus to ensure what the constitutional demand of not uh, disenfranchising uh, potential voters uh, is conformed to. Uh, so that's why some of us started uh, making noise as to the demarcation of only the district offices as registration centers. What's a problem? looking at the, comp the, the composition of our districts and some of the areas uh, that is sometimes even inaccessible uh, coming to their district capitals. Uh, so that was a problem that we needed to have uh, uh, built concerns, but unfortunately it started. The second issue is now that the HDC is going ahead, until uh, the court's uh, decision comes to probably uh, say otherwise. Uh, what's CDD Ghana and Kodio advice is that we 
uh, try to educate, sensitize our people to try their best uh, to go and register. I say so because uh, when you look into our uh, Fourth Republic, almost all our registration uh, exercises have encountered one or the other problem. Uh, but at the end of the day, we are able to go through, uh, even though probably may not be a satisfaction as we uh, may have wanted. Uh, when you look into the time that we're introducing the BVD machine, we had similar challenges that uh, sometimes, even if the weather becomes bad, the batteries do not work. I, I believe you remember those periods. Yeah, and 2012, for example. And that we had to uh, fight for backup batteries to be brought in. Uh, because some polling stations were able to be functioning. Uh, even when it gets time that the sun uh, that, that does not shine, the batteries don't work. There were so many problems we encountered, but at the end of the day, we were able to do something. And what I've also noticed is that uh, in terms of this, when we realized that after the stipulated period uh, uh, given for registration on the exercise to take place, if at the end of the last day we realized that we were not able to do it, some recommendations come, and usually the AC has also come up with additional days for mop ups. Uh, so, yes, uh, there, there are genuine challenges, as uh, my brother Elvis has been saying, and as all of us have, have said previously. But since the exercise has started, uh, we encourage everybody who qualifies at this window to register, to make an attempt to go and register uh, so that we don't uh, intentionally uh, stay out of the contest because. Uh, we enumerated challenges that we, we thought were going to happen, and based on that, we are not going to make an attempt. And I've also heard some people who are publicly discouraging youth to go and register. I mean, it's a national exercise, voting is not compulsory. Uh, so whether you register or not, the Electoral Commission will go ahead. That is the most unfortunate aspect. Whether you do register or not, the Electoral Commission will still go ahead and use the same register. Uh, we, we, we may have court cases, but the, 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 the point is that your name is not in the register. So at this stage, all that we can do is to encourage us, uh, many people as who are qualified at this window to register to do so, whilst we try to settle other matters. Yes, it's unfortunate that we all know the challenges that some of our people we go through. And as, as Elvis was saying, our electoral process uh, demands that we don't put expenses, we don't put costs on people who want to register to exercise their franchise. That's why it is imperative that we create uh, the avenues so close to the people such like that they don't incur costs to facilitate themselves to go and take part in national exercise that's supposed to be free. Uh, but that said, I believe at this stage that the site has started, let's do the sensitization so that we'll get people to register. And at the end of the day, we can also assess the situation as we I mean, as started assessing and see how it goes and what recommendations that may come up. Mm. Now, there is this very peculiar situation of uh, candidates and people who are interested in elections having to transport uh, potential registrants to the various registration centers. Is it wrong? I mean, I'm very, told. Very, just, very, my brother. Just I, right I now. This, I've said this since it started. I mean, so now that we said we are going back to use the CI-91, the CI-91 also makes room for people who don't have the needed identification to use Garanta system. So the person is not only traveling from his village or rural area to the district office, but also one looking for people who are willing and ready to move from their villages to the district capital to guarantee uh, for the person who's coming to register. So the person is not looking for a TNT alone, he is also looking for TNT himself and two other people not even talk about the willingness of getting the people to follow him to the district capital. Looking at some of our remote areas that we have thought through the district because of the kind of job we do. Mm -hmm. And we know some of the challenges that some of our communities face. Some of them even access their district capital only on market days. And even though they go and see the way they are packed in one taxi. When rains, uh, there are heavy rains, the roads are cut off. And they cannot sometimes one month do it, they are not able to access their district. So there are real challenges that we, uh, we, 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 we started saying, talking about. But as I said, notwithstanding these things, the AC says it's still going ahead. At this point, uh, what the, all that we can do is to canvas and educate, sensitize our people to try within their means, whatever they can, to get registered. Because it's one thing having to register and one thing also voting. But the key point is that if your name is not in the register, you're not a voter. 
So let's try and canvas and try for them to do their maximum best to get registered. Then, I mean, as, going, as we go ahead, we see what recommendations that will come up. If I can push you a little bit further on this, if you put together all the things you have talked about in terms of what appears to be irregularities, the technical ones, the difficulties with the situation of registration centers, and all the other things, does it in any way point to the direction of voter suppression? Not at all. As I said, I said, let's group the issues into two. The first one is the real challenges, natural challenges, because of the terrain we operate. Mm -hmm. and because of poverty levels across the country that would sometimes make it impossible for some of the people to come and also the operational challenges as to the machines getting break down as, as i've read uh, on net this morning and also uh the, the 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 minimal attendance they are able to attend to people who queue yes there are challenges there but as i said even in the midst of COVID, that okay. we're entertaining fears that mm -hmm. because of the outbreak of the disease we couldn't have done the registration. We still went ahead and, I mean, we were able to uh, come up successfully. Uh, so let's see what happens. The machines will break down, but if at the end of the day, by the two weeks, because of the fault of the EC machines, people are still in the queue. They are not able to register. Just like voting day. If at, after 5 p.m. there are still people in the queue, they are all allowed to vote. Okay. So I believe if by the end of the two weeks, there are a number of people who are willing and ready to register, but because of no fault of the they couldn't, I believe the EC will still extend the day for everybody to be registered. I am grateful to you, Paula Brampa Mensa, PNK, who is with Kodio for a very long time, watcher of our elections. I still have with me a former director of elections of the opposition NDC, Elvis Afriyanka. So, concluding with you, Elvis, what are the practical solutions that can improve our registration exercise going forward. Are you talking about this particular one or in the future? Yes, this particular one, because we have a couple of days left. This is just day two here. Well, um, it's a difficult situation, and uh, I think I respectfully disagree with my brother that um, this will not amount to voter suppression, because um, there's a contradiction. On one hand, he agrees that when people are, have to travel from far distances and they cannot afford the transportation and all the inconveniences and with the race, they find it difficult to move to the registration centers at the district level to go and register. That automatically stops or prevents those people from registering. And the law, CI 91, and the uh, uh, Article 4245E are very clear that the Electoral Commission must ensure that the registration centers are accessible and suitable. So if the registration centers are not accessible and suitable, and it comes at a cost to the poor person, and for that reason, the person is unable to go and register, that amounts to voter suppression. Because the Constitution in 45E says the Electoral Commission must put in place mechanisms to expand the register. So whatever the EC does must be in consonance with that. That should be the motive. That should be the driving force. So if the Constitution enjoins you that ensure that you expand the register, and yet by the systems and processes that you put in place, people will not be able to come out to register, then it will amount to voter suppression. Mm. Now, um, this is what we have. I will encourage our party people. Um, unfortunately, opposition in our part of the world is a challenge. And so we must not relent. I recall 2008, uh, when I was Deputy General Secretary, the kind of struggles we had to go through. When the government is about to fall, they adopt all kinds of tricks. Let's all mobilize our people the way John Dumelo is doing. I'll be going out from Friday. All of us, PCs, former appointees, constituency executives, let's go around, look for people, the ones who can support one way or the other, let's get them to register. But that is not an excuse. Except for that, the, except that, um, yep. except that the conduct of the voter registration exercise is purely within the remit of the Electoral Commission. You know that, and not the governing party. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
That's factual. That's without doubt. Um, you know, I'm in a very calm mood today. Yes. Don't let me go <laughs> to the fourth gear. And it's completely ridiculous. I all guess the other countries, all, yeah. all the other countries, uh, that funny things happen. Mm. Where the process is not within the domain of the electoral uh, 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 the electoral authorities of those countries. I am grateful uh, to you. Uh, yeah, didn't, didn't happen. Uh, so the, let's not let's not even go there. You see, sometimes you Elvis, know, I am grateful to you this evening. I'm happy that we, we, we get so I'm happy that you joined I mean, us on the show. And many thanks to you, John Dumelo. Many thanks to you, Dr. Sebo Kwaku, and also PNK Abrampa with Kodio. And you also for joining us on tonight's edition of Our Front. Many thanks to you.